we are approaching October and October is the month of West Needs Mystery Need Along. So today I wanna to introduce you to the chapter five of my series called Humans of West Needs, where you get to meet other knitters just like you who are gonna participate in this year's Mystery Need Along as we discuss their yarn choices, why they decided to join, and all their experience with West Needs and why they love Stephen's designs. Oh my God. <laughs> this is Kendrick. He's being very antsy this morning. So is Kendrick a fan of Stephen West? I think so. You know what? I think so. When I when when I brought him home, I have a big starflake blanket that sits on our couch, and he immediately like went up and snuggled up in it. And I was like, okay, if the dog <laughs> likes knits, he's in good company then. So, yeah, he's been loving it so far. Are you gonna uh, make a sweater? Totally. <laughs> Absolutely, that's happening. I've looked at a couple patterns and yeah, at some point, probably within the next couple of weeks, I'll start working on one because it's getting kind of cold here in Chicago. So, well, let's talk about next couple of weeks. So, okay. what made you decide to join it again this year? You know, I think ultimately since the first one, so I did Slip Stravaganza and then I did last year's and I think for me, it's like coming from my dance background of like having people create on us in the room and not knowing what was going to happen um, is really appealing to me. So like after I did the first one, I was like, oh, this like reminds me of being in the studio. This is so cool. Like I can totally get on board with this. And so, yeah, now it's just like October is mcal season you know what i mean, <laughs> well, I mean was there like something that you needed the first time or the second time that you were like oh i wish that wasn't part of this show um yes <laughs> <laughs> the crisscrosses for sure in shawlography i was like this is a no for me but i love the look of them in the end you know what i'm mean? it's just like the process of it was a no but the product of it was a yes so and also too I'm sure like I was doing it too tightly because I was worried that it wasn't going to be right and so like getting them off was like such a pain but yeah no other than that like even the little shrimps that were on this one I didn't mind they they were they took forever but it was like oh if this is the step and this is the step so <laughs> we just gotta do it well so the first time like when I mean, you needed a whole bunch of his stuff, right? Is it yeah. difficult for you to pick colors that's not gonna look like the any other shawl that you already have? Um, no, not really. I find that I something that I appreciate about his stuff is that it is so wild and playful, and I love that. And so I usually just take each whether it's a shawl or I've done a couple sweaters now, I, I take them project by project. And so I look at what his sort of inspiration was and then go through and see other people's pictures, whether on hashtags and stuff. And then I decide on what my palette for what my general taste is. And then I just go from there. Okay, so do you have already something picked or are you gonna wait for the first oh. two and then just- No, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, I can show you. Um, so I decided that I, for all the ones that I'm doing, like when they happen, I'm always going to use the same dyer. Um, just that's how I started. I'm just going to keep doing it. So I'm using murky depths again, and it's kind of hard to see. This is actually like a deep green. And then this one is lighter. And then this is sort of this rusty orange color. Um, this is one of my favorite colors that, uh, Debbie dies and I've used it a bunch. So I was like, oh, that can be my pop of color. But greens are becoming more of my thing. Like I'm finding myself gravitating towards greens a lot more lately. So 
Yeah, I'm super excited about it. I, so are you going to be talking about it on your channel? Like, are you going to be covering the whole, are you yeah. doing sober kind of thing? Well, I won't do it like weekly throughout, um, just because my October is a little bit busy. Um, but definitely every two weeks is when I put out an episode. And so I will talk about it then. And actually, I think my next episode comes out the Saturday after the first clue is, is put out. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how much progress I can make before <laughs> that episode. But usually the first clue is, like, so silly and so fun. And, like, you're, the excitement of, oh, my gosh, it's starting. And so I usually just zip through that one really fast. I mean, are you ever frustrated with, like, you're already done and there is another week to wait? Like, is that a problem for you? No. I actually really like that. I think... Because I'm so excited, I plow through the clues. Although last year there was a point where like, it was that Friday, I think they came out on Fridays last year and it was that Friday. And I was like, just finishing that one. And it like, that brought me anxiety of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not done with it yet. But no, I think it's because I rotate what I'm working on I find it, it's great. Like I can get through the clue and then I'm like, okay, that can go sit and I can admire it until the next clue. But then I can work on like these four other things that have been side-eyeing me because I haven't touched them because I've only been working on this project. Well, you wear all the shawls, right? Yeah, totally. So is that always a conversation starter? Like do people stop you on the streets and ask you what what is it? Yeah, a, a couple times I've been out places and people have said, oh my gosh, I love what you're wearing. And so I'll open it up a little bit and, you know, say thank you. Oh, that's so kind. And then a couple times people have been like, oh, who made that for you? It's beautiful. And I'm like, I literally sat <laughs> with this myself. What are you talking about? And then that for sure opens up a whole nother can of worms. Oh my gosh, I can't mm. believe like I've never mm. seen so many male or a male knitter before. And yeah. Well, you also need on the bus when you travel to work. Uh, yeah. Do you ever need on the clues or is it like, you know, what kind of project? This will be the first time that I think I'm going to take it with me because the first two were done, you know, more so in the pandemic when I wasn't really leaving the house. It was definitely working from home, which honestly like made it great because then I had time to like, if I was in a meeting, I could work on it or or just like a little bit of downtown from, downtime from working from home. But now that um, we're, you know, I'm back to almost my normal schedule, I'll for sure probably take it on the, depending on what is in the pattern, I'll probably take it on the bus with me. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you need so much. It's such a prolific knitter. Do you think Stephen changed you as a knitter? Yeah, for sure. I think... You know, I started, I learned how to knit like over a decade ago from a friend of mine um, that I worked with. And in my head at that time, you know, I thought like, oh, I'm only going to make X things. Like I could never make a sweater. I could never do this or that. And so I only knit like scarves, I'm baby blankets, things like that. And then it was probably a year before the pandemic. So what was that, four years ago now, three years ago now? Um, that I picked it back up to, because I, st I stopped knitting and just crocheted primarily throughout. But then um, once I picked up knitting again, because someone, a co another coworker wanted me to like recreate a scarf that they had, I found, um, what's the name of that shawl? I wear it all the, oh, Barndom uh, by Stephen West. And I, I saw it and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I'm going to try it. And just the things that I learned from that, you know, doing a triangle shawl, doing these like little cables with these architectural details to them. I was like, oh, this is like, this is more than just doing like back and forth garter stitch or whatever. Like there's, there's so much more to it. And from there, I think I, I, try to sweater next I knit that knit that shawl twice like back to back and then I think I did a sweater and then yeah we were into the pandemic and I wanted to learn brioche because my 
my initial first wanting to do Stephen West was a cowl. I think it's called Walk It. And, and I bought the pattern and everything. And then it was like, oh, you have to do brioche. And I was like, well, I don't know what that is. And so I taught myself brioche by doing the star blanket because I had time to just I mean, when, when I was knitting Starflake, right? And it's similar to Star Flanket by the designer. Yeah. Like what I was blown away is how like clever the construction was. And that's what I love about Steven's projects because totally. I feel like every single time he manages to teach me some like couple new tricks and some couple ways of like to think about knitting that I haven't been thinking. Yeah, I agree. Like that... So doing the blanket first really blew my mind. It was like making those little like things that were going to be the center and then just going out from there. And so then when I when I went back and I did Starflake, it was it was such a breeze to do. And I'd done brioche a lot by then. Not a lot, but definitely more. And yeah, the construction is always really interesting. And there's just there's there's a chill element to it of like, just play and see where it takes you. And I really love that. It's just like, yeah, we're just gonna sit and play. And by the end, we'll have something that's really amazing that you can wear out and people will be like, wait, what is that? And how did you make it? <laughs> it looks way harder than it actually is, which is also so mind blowing to me. You're a continental Nita, right? Yeah. So can we like agree that continental brioche is much easier than the throwing? Oh, absolutely. I was trying 100%. to explain to Martin and he was arguing. He's like, no, like it's so difficult. It's like no. so easier, right? It's way easier because just because of where the you're you're holding the yarn, the way that you can get into the stitch, like, yeah, I can fly through brioche. It's Thanks. actually, it's funny that people are intimidated by it because it is so easy. And I think too watching Steven's videos on how to do it like for some reason in my head it really clicked for me and I was like oh that's it oh okay cool like let's just do this and okay. yeah I fly through it now I'm actually like I was trying to teach myself the English style throwing in brioche and I find there's like so many extra movements to it that right like, tripping me up you know? yeah you gotta bring it this way then you gotta go it yeah it's that's interesting it's yeah I think continental's easier in my opinion martin are you listening <laughs> <laughs> i think you know maybe i'm a bit off more than i can chew i'm about to find out aren't i <laughs> well i haven't done Mr. need long either so it's gonna be you and i both so we'll see <laughs> I, I heard on your well it really it's because of your zoom and also frivolous and frugal that that's how i thought oh yeah i'm i'm doing it because I've been knitting such a long time, but never was brave. I'm not a fearless knitter, you know? Well, I mean, what can possibly go wrong? Nothing. Right? It could sit in a bag for a couple of years and I've abandoned it because it seems too much. I don't think so. I can do it. Right. I'm doing it. <laughs> I, I, like, I'm actually like very curious to see you participating in it because you've been knitting all your life. Right. You've taught numerous students because you're a school teacher. So you did you teach kids in school how to knit or no, like who would they? Five years in an after-school program, I caught many, many children, not during the school day. And then I had to teach a lot of teachers how to do it so they could help them because when they get stuck. And we made blankets for the homeless in that Warm Up America program. We made squares. And I even did it in the high school until they decided that the needle needles were like weapons and they couldn't come into the school. But I, and boys, too. It wasn't just girls. And it was very, very satisfying to teach them. Yeah. So what are you hoping to learn from Stephen West? I'm hoping to become a fearless knitter, like my some <laughs> of my friends who've been knitting two years and can make all these cabled things. I, I can't, I, I'm trying to understand why in my life I just knit and purl, knit or, you know, stockinette, garter. And, and then I only came to color work maybe, I don't know, a few years ago. And this is going to be my Rhinebeck sweater I'm proud of. So, you know, I've, I'm able to tackle that. And well, Okay, I, so Rhinebeck is coming, right? It's in four right. weeks. And I'm going to be there. Saturday and Sunday on the podcaster hill, probably uh, from 12 to 1. But if you see me anywhere at Brian Back, please just stop me and I say will, that. for sure. Well, you're a celebrity. You, I, I don't know stuff. about that. <laughs> and there that's Stephen my... West Shaw behind you, isn't it? Is yes, this is the Star Flakes. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Well, I've heard a lot about Stephen West uh, watching podcasts and I was always intrigued, but I'd see him in some of these things and it just looked so exotic and dramatic. And I thought, oh, you know, I'm kind of an old grandma. But then I, I think these things are very beautiful, the colors, the design. And it was only when I realized I had the boneyard shawl pattern in my collection that I hadn't made yet and looked it up and saw his tutorial. And I thought, oh, it's the shawl that started it all. I can do that. I can do that one for sure. And so... Um, then I thought, well, why not do this? I heard uh, Dawn talking on The Frivolous and Frugal. Right. And I saw her on your uh, video and I thought, oh, I have fear of missing out. I don't want to miss out. <laughs> no, that's going to be fun. Like, that's part of why I decided to join this year as well, just because, like, I've needed a bunch of Stevens shows and I'm a huge fan, have been for years. And then I realized when I was interviewing him, I asked him, so why mystery like why do you go for the mystery part and he said well I like to manipulate people I like to throw them into unknown and like make them do things they wouldn't do otherwise yeah. and I thought, you know what like this is brilliant because all of us like I find a lot of knitters actually who have been knitting all their life are sort of like using it as meditation and they all listen this familiar environment where they go for something like socks or hat something comforting something easy exactly you know, as the time to like need during TV. Right. Sort of thing. And I can never do that because I started meeting five years ago. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's uh, the fear of missing out. Right. But this right. meeting, because I'm like, oh my God, I wasted so many years not meeting Aww. that I have to like learn all the techniques possible. So for me, it's like, I cannot combine meeting this TV. I have to like, the best I can combine is maybe this audio book if it's not too complicated because I'm jumping for like, I went, I learned brioche probably like two months into my meeting. Wow. I yeah. went for Shetland Lace like six months after I started meeting, you know, so it's like I was always jumping for like the next hardest thing. So that's what some of the newer knitters I know make these fabulous things. And then we're all intimidated. People in my age group, you know, we didn't grow up with YouTube. We had, you know, maybe our grandmother taught us and then we might have had a book along the way where someone helped us. But you know, we just didn't jump off any cliffs. So I feel excited about it. I think I can do it. I mean, I, I, I think it's a good experience as a teacher to become a student. And it seems like Stephen West is an excellent teacher. And that's what I got from his tutorial on the Boneyard. I thought, you know, he's just excellent. So I was in admiration of that. And I've been in awe looking at his gorgeous shawls. I just didn't think they were for me, but. So you know. are you, are you going to be team Keith or team? I didn't, I've been digging around in my stash. I have these things ready and I, I was going to make that Pearl Soho half and half triangle. And then I thought, oh, I have a lot of fingering that's plain. But then when I did the black and white picture, there's not a lot of contrast with these two. And then this would be the pop. This is, this is a Gotland. That's just fabulous. It's kind of, but then I thought, oh, that's kind of boring, you know, like stayed. So then I thought, okay, we got it. What else do I have? I have a lot of yarn, but I don't have what I need. I don't have the yarn. You know, I have a lot of single sock skeins and stuff, but this is definitely going to be my pop. I oh, just, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I might just, go with those two grays, actually. Yeah. Like, I think, interesting. What, what was I thinking? You know, just look, look at that. That could make right. it, that could make it come alive. And this is um, Jagger Spun. So I thought, I mean, it's kind of late to order a kit. I did look at them. And I love that uh, Visa called about Dawn's kit. I thought that was so cool, cute. You know? <laughs> well, and I mean, if you think about it, right, you want to become a fearless knitter. Do you think Stephen pushes us in that direction? Do you think like his personality makes us fearless? I think he makes you think you can do anything and there's no reason not to. And the way I heard, when I heard of how he breaks it down, we used to break things down for students in different classes. So I like that idea of it being broken down. I thought I won't even, and not knowing where you're going, it'll maybe be less scary. I don't know. Well, you're, you're also a professional photographer. Like you taught photography in high school. Yeah, just for three years for, for teaching. But yeah, I, I, I've done a lot of weddings and stuff. So yeah. Well, when you look at Stephen's pictures, <gasps> what comes to mind? <laughs> well, his dance. I see the fluid movement. Like it's a static picture and yet there's movement. He captures that with his with his work. I mean, he's just alive, very fluid. But, you know, is, there's a lot to be admired. But, so do, you know, you, like, do you already have a plan of how you're going to take pictures of this show? Well, I, I read about that and they don't want people to spoil it and you need to put up the icon. So I'm into that. And I do try to post. Well, I'm proud of something that I've made. I do like to post it. I have things I'm not proud of, but I've also photographed things when there's a mistake, you know, 
and I cut, oh, and I cut off a hat's ribbing, you know, because it was too garish color or whatever. You know, I mean, I, I've gotten where I can do things like that, repair, graft, you know, that kind of stuff where I never would have taken scissors to knitting in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's amazing do you have any tips like photography tips for us the, the only key is the light and my friend who teaches now can tell you that and it's all about the light and the direction of the light and have you ever noticed when people show things on the color I don't mean is this a true color does it look good or look bad so often um it doesn't and my, we have a friend in our zoom group who's explained in great detail about kelvins and such and why you know things don't look right like they should so the only tips I have is um just just go be in natural light that's that's what i think is best what well, what about the tips for people who are still on sidelines and thinking well is that need the long really for me like should they even try what's well, your I advice for good, them i think it's good to break the stereotype all grandmother you know knitting gray-haired grandmother i don't have a rocking chair handy but so I, i feel like i'm doing a brave you know young that a young person would be fearless and so why not what am i waiting for i mean you know time's getting ticking i better get i better get on the stephen west wagon or else i'll be left behind so i don't know why not just why not that's what i decided what where have i been i've been admiring all these people talking about them showing them and i'm always like oh wow look at those little things that look like shrimps how did they ever do that i wouldn't even know you know those that little one where they had to right I can do it. Is I there like something that like you intimidated about this knit along? Intimidated? Well, just the uh, fear of the unknown, I guess. But, you know, and also I'm really good at that meditative sitting and knitting, knitting, knitting. And I've used it as an anxiety reducer um, and things like that. To be, and so when I think about having to follow a chart and directions, you know, sometimes like you can't watch a film with subtitles. Right. <laughs> well, you could, but then you might need to think back a little on your approach. And I hear you're a monogamous knitter, and I am not. I you well, know, Mart I Martin has been like a really bad influence with his like 14 work in progress kind of thing. So right now, I'm I'm knitting three different things, and I'm trying desperately to finish them before the knit along starts, so I can become again monogamous knitter. But I don't know. Well, that's why I feel happy I got my Rhinebeck sweater finished. And a friend even sent this little tag. It says Rhinebeck sweater 2022. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm ready. I'm breaking it in. And so I hear some people go and they're still knitting on the sleeves or they have one sleeve hanging off. I've never been. So I'm excited to go. Oh, and this is going to be my third year and I'm beyond excited. Like it's, I, I just love that place. I love seeing everybody's projects. The only thing, like I'm not necessarily buying into the whole Rhinebeck sweater thing because I feel like anything you wear knitting wise is can be Rhinebeck, you know, it doesn't have to be. Really? We were just, we have a group of six who do Zooming. Well, there are eight of us actually. And I'm taking two little cardboard people um, with sweaters like this. You saw the picture. Saw that, yeah. So we made it and sort of, it's been a group effort and we're doing it. We've not been to Rhinebeck, so it's kind of initiation. I don't know if we'll ever go again, but we're going to go and, uh, Yeah, I don't know. I guess a lot of people will there be with extravagant, beautiful raiment. But also, Stephen just seems so personable and so nice and kind and, you know, accessible. I love this thing. Well, if he didn't want to be seen, he'd be there in a hoodie and, you know, overalls and a mustache or whatever. I thought that was clever that he's open to encouraging knitters and people need encouragement. You know, some people think, oh, I'm a better knitter than you. And they look down on your stuff or they say, oh, you made a mistake right there. You know, That's that's not the knitter community I want to be a part of. I want to be in that all-encompassing, generous, spirited uh, community, which is really important. Well, as one of my guests said, if they see mistakes, they're probably too close to you anyway. And they need to that's see. a good point. I know. That's a very good point. And, but there are people who are... Um, I guess they don't feel good about themselves totally and they make this fabulous thing. And then if somebody else one has another one that might even one up it or whatever, if there's, it's not a competition. Like everybody it's just- Absolutely not, yeah. And it's funny because like, I often find it's also a matter of the mood. Like sometimes you feel like needing something that your brain twists in the process. And sometimes you just feel like needing guard the socks and like there is nothing wrong with either or. I'm a sock knitter and um, I, I find it very soothing and comforting to just go in little circles and just feel happy. You it know? took me five years to beat my fear of socks until <laughs> Professor Pearl came into my life and told me, here's the pattern, just knit it. <laughs> and yeah, I, I think if you just take a step, I just try to do exactly what it says and look at those commas and hope there isn't any errata and just do what it says and then it comes out. That's what I think. But I've, I've, I've only made one 
cabled sweater in my life. So I know this is twists and turns, but I have a ton of little cable needles, wooden, plastic, thick, thin. So I'm ready. I have all the tools. I don't know. Bring I, it on, Stephen. Be I, ready. I, I know he must feel really good that he does have this. It's like a magic wand. He's like the grand master, uh, you know, manipulating all of us to do it. But there is a thing. I don't want to be left out. So two of us in our group are doing it. And I was hoping everyone would think, oh, yeah, good idea. But just two of us. But still, well, it's, a, it's a start, you know, maybe next year. Yeah. And I didn't want to miss out. So I'm angry. I'm, and I'm not going to be embarrassed and have it, you know, still looking like this at the end. I'm going to have a, a shawl and, you know, okay. I've going to put it on and feel good about it and walk out and feel well and then people remark say oh that's gorgeous and I'll say oh designed by Stephen West <laughs> I'm still on the fence so maybe you can weigh in <laughs> every time I look at it I'm like oh no this one no that one I there's so many good ideas so I mean, you are the person who took swatching to the whole other level for me. Like I've watched a lot of people contemplating their choices of yarn. And then I watched your YouTube channel. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I hate swatching too. I don't know what happened. Um, I I have a really hard time visualizing. Um, even with the minis next to each other, I would just stare at them and be like, I guess. Um, and I'm kind of nervous because last year this was my shellography and I love knitting it, but it turned out much, much different than I, I don't know what I had never done a West knits um, mystery knit along before. So I had no idea what to expect. And I just like, it ended up so wild for me. I'm loving it actually. <laughs> I mean, I do <laughs> like it and my kids love it. I mean, like they love it. I had to find it. They're always taking it and, and using it. Well, for if they like it, can they love it. somehow to put the loose ends in? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I had to um, try to get a picture that didn't show on my hands. I don't know why it matters. Um, but they like it that way. I actually was sewing in some of them and they were like, no, the fringe. Right. So, okay, yeah. so let's talk about your um, swatching. Yes. So I dyed up. Um, I thought it would be fun to dye yarns myself because um, I have recently been experimenting with dyeing yarn um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of try out different color combinations and see what I could do. So I dyed up a whole bunch of minis. I have kind of a pile over there, but just a whole bunch of um, mini skeins. And then I swatched to see what I would get. And so first um, I thought I would like the purples together because I've been wearing a lot of purple. So I did a light purple, a dark purple, and then this light tan color. And <laughs> I mentioned this before, I did that trick before I started swatching where you take a picture of your yarn and then you turn it to grayscale to see and if you there's- You did that just with yarn before you even start swatching, right? Yeah, and the grayscale picture was like, oh, those two colors are really close. <laughs> But I just didn't believe it. I was like, no, look, I'm looking at it in real life. It's going to look different once I knit it up. It's going to be great. But then I knit it up and I was like, oh, actually, I'm like, actually, they're right. <laughs> so <laughs> the picture did not lie. So I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to like that close of a color. So then where's my next slide? So then I was like, okay, I'm going to do the pinks because um, I had a light pink and a dark pink and a and a darker brown that I thought would be great. But then I kind of had the same problem, <laughs> only with the darker colors. So I, I have this dark pink and the dark brown, which it looks a little better on camera, but in person, they're very close. Well, so what like, is like, do you have a favorite color that's something you always gravitate towards? Well, I mean, if I'm being honest, gray, <laughs> as far as like things I wear. But for Stephen West, like, really, you're going to... You're going to make a gray shawl for a West Knits mystery knit along. I don't know. So I was like, okay. So then I was like, well, I do have gray, right? Because I love gray. So I knit up a light gray and a dark gray. And then, I mean, this is like a, tr in my mind, this is like a true Stephen West right. color palette, you know, like. It's so, okay. So like when you look at true Stephen West color yeah. Right, like when we're talking about the bright pinks, yeah, and that green and the like electric yellow and all of that stuff, is that 
totally foreign to you? Like, is that not your color aesthetics? Yeah, no. I mean, I love to see it. That's actually one of the reasons I really enjoy participating in the Mystery Knit Along because so many people just have such incredible, I mean, they're so brave <laughs> with colors, you know, but I mean, I can't imagine myself reaching for this to actually wear it as a shawl because most of what I wear is like very boring. <laughs> But that's what spice up and in gray. I like, know. Like were, I know. Were well, I was like, gray. well, <laughs> I mean, it could still happen. I haven't dyed up the full skins yet. I have like a couple more days. But then I was like, all right, well, I'm trying to learn from last year <laughs> and knit something that's a little bit more subdued that I might have a greater chance of using. So then I tried to add in different color pops with the grays because I do like the light gray, dark gray. Yeah. Um, so I did the blue, but that was kind of like, eh, I don't know, not very inspiring. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll stick the purples in there because I did like the purples. And so far, I think, which way do I turn it? So far, I think I'm going to go with this. I think the light gray with the purple as an accent. And then the my main two colors would be the light purple and the dark purple. Well, there's still a few hours to decide. You know? <laughs> and then, <laughs> then um, as someone recommended that I dye up a slightly darker brown because I do love this and then I was like oh, should I I mean really I should be dying more mini skins I dyed like 12 of them so I don't know it's, it's the madness let's, never let's talk a little bit about that when did you start knitting um I started knitting at the very end of 2019 okay and so like you you learning how to knit right Older <laughs> times we all home we understand what was the jump into the dying? Like, what was the emergency dying procedure? I don't know. I just, um, I'm trying to think, how did that happen? I, first I thought it would be fun to dye. Um, I saw, I watched some video where someone had dyed up yarn with avocado pits and we eat a ton of avocados. And I was like, what a good project. I can like, I was looking for stuff to do with my kids because we were all stuck in the house. So I was like, okay, let's do that. And so I dyed up this skein of yarn. I don't even have it because I overdyed and it was so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it turned like this weird, like flesh color. It was gross. I'm like, oh, nobody wants that. So I was like, well, that didn't work. Um, but I had all this bare yarn because I didn't, because I have a tendency to kind of just jump in when I do things. So I'm like, well, if I'm going to be dying stuff, I mean, I should get a few. So then I was like, well, what am I going to do with that? I had just this little cubby of bare yarn. So I bought a starter kit of acid dyes, just like really, really reasonable, just a couple of dyes. I was like, I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to use up what I have, but it's really fun. And it's actually not, um, it's not as technically challenging as I thought it would be. Um, I guess my experience with natural dyes was kind of a more sad experience, but there is easier to be successful with acid dyes. So um, I just like the surprise aspect of it because I still don't, I mean, I can guess what it's going to turn out to be like, but I'm not a, that accurate. <laughs> so, it's so. like letting the mystery of like what your yarn is going to be to the mystery of the mystery knit along. I know. So it's been really fun. I mean, I'm getting better at at predicting um, what it's going to look at. Look how, about, like. how about like predicting what Stephen West is going to come up with? Any? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have no idea. I honestly, I, I'm so part of the reason I really like it um, is the community aspect, but also um, Steve, the way Stephen sort of approaches his mystery knit along is kind of the way I like to approach knitting is that like, it should be fun and joyful and it's not that scary you know I mean like it's just yarn like if you mess it up you're gonna mess it up anyway like it's okay <laughs> you know so you think about yourself in 2018 right yeah you imagine the life you're living now I mean you're on YouTube you're on TikTok you're on Instagram your knitting is every I mean if I met you today I would think you've been knitting all your life right yeah, my they're family like, and friends sure. kind of think they're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're coming along, right? It's been a few years, so they're like, okay, like you, you know, Karen has that 
weird knitting thing that she does, you know, but um, it was surprising how, I don't know, I just really enjoy so many things about it, like the process and the the people and the, it's like this whole other world that I didn't even know was there. So this yeah. year you're going to be covering uh, Mystery Knit Along on your channel, right? Yeah, I'm hopeful. Um, I'm hoping it will hold me accountable. <laughs> I did a pretty good job keeping up last year with the exception of the last clue, because um, then there was nothing to work for. You know, it's like, oh, I can finish that when I finish it. Um, but hopefully if I, you know, if I talk about the process, it will inspire me to actually like get to the finish, the very end, as opposed to this. Is, are you planning to finish those loose ends before the start of the new mystery in Italy? I mean, no, <laughs> I don't know. I do a few here and there, but I, I'm being honest when I say I have a six-year-old daughter um, and she loves my ends. Every time she sees me sewing them in, she's like, no, the fringe. And I mean, I don't really want to sew them in in the first place. So if someone's going to complain about it, <laughs> um, you know, I have all any excuse not to do it. <laughs> I watched you on Martin live and then I saw your, that's how I met you. Um, I can explain in a bit how I met Martin, but um, watched you guys live and really was in, inspirational. And then I saw your reach out and I thought, oh, I'd love to do that, but no. And I, I thought about it for so long and I was really excited to see all the, the, the normal people like us who just wanted to uh, participate in, in it. And yeah, I watched them all and they all had a little bit of me in them, but, and I just thought a few days ago, it's all over now, I'll reach out because she's <laughs> gonna say no. <laughs> Well, you said yes. I like, surprised you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, not great at this kind of thing. You wouldn't believe it. I've done vlogs and I'm not good. Not good. <laughs> Very shy. Very shy. My seven year old grandson said to me tonight, I said, to him, I'm going to talk to Irina live on the internet tonight about my knitting. And he and I said, Have you got any advice for Nana? And he said, It kind of, he kind of said, Just be yourself, but in a seven year old way. He said, Nana, just be like you and just pretend you're talking to nobody. But what is it about talking to a screen? And like, I can talk all day long to people. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Edit. Edit. Ah, that's so staying. Sorry, that's it. totally staying in as a part of it. We have to make him a star of the show. So <laughs> you, can, you can tell oh, him we're talking all about him. Well, oh, yeah. Big part of my life. <laughs> I think it's like, Lots of times when I interview people, people talking about dealing with uh, chronic diseases and how knitting helps them to deal with pain and help them mm -hmm. deal with like everyday trouble. You are dealing with HDHD like all, all your life. Tell me how does knitting <gasps> help you in that respect? Okay, so I'm from the I'm a baby I was born in the 60s and ADHD was not a thing when I was a child they gave me Valium to calm me down little blue pills I remember um they don't do that anymore <laughs> and I was never like anybody else and I I think apparently as you get older you can interact better in society and um, people don't really know in everyday life but I am very very mental I talk very fast and I use my hands a lot I'm, I'm obviously exaggerating it to talk to you now so knitting um I'm always doing something with my hands so back to my grandson he's just started a new school and day one they gave him some blue tack because he said Nana my hands wouldn't stop moving so it is hereditary and I was so glad the school did that because all those years ago you'd be in trouble for just not being you know for not listening or not concentrating but just being able to do something with your hands, I think. And and I feel like an octopus a lot, that I can do about 20 things at once quite well with my mind completely focused on everything. But as I'm the age I am now, I do need to relax. And yeah, and I think knitting came back into my life in the 80s. And um, it was such a great time for knitting in the 80s. It was revolutionary, you know, long gone were the days of grandma knitting your school jumpers and turning the collars around on things. And I don't know, knitting was fantastic in the 80s. And I started back in the 80s knitting. 
and I've never stopped and it, it's just grown and grown and it's now an art form and I'm just there I'm there with it I love it do you remember the the day or the year you discovered Stephen West for yourself I wanted to make that bit quite interesting but not really just YouTube and somehow could it be Instagram could it have been YouTube I saw him I saw his color and for me I was sold that was it it's all I needed because I never approach a subject I don't like the simple stuff I've, whatever I do I like to be able to do it straight away and I wanted to knit all his things having done two of his uh, MCALs now you end up with amazing results and and they're not very complicated at all so going back to the 80s there were designers like Patricia Roberts and her stuff was complicated. You know, you would have about five colours trailing behind you and you would be doing cables with, and then you'd have um, you'd have cables in cotton and then you'd have mohair in the centre with different colour spots in it and a bunch of grapes somewhere. And these all require different colours. And yeah, I did all that because I loved it. But Stephen's stuff is just, it's brilliant. It's great fun. And it's just, this is one of his scarves. This isn't one of the MCALs, but it's... um. I know, just one because I love these textured edges that when you wear a shawl, you've got that element of just something a bit special. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it, but anyway. So I don't know when I discovered him. I discovered him and he was for me. I was sold straight away. Just love him. I have got maybe six or seven of his books. I've just downloaded his brioche course, um, invested in the brioche course um, because I really want to, learn from him i have um is it nancy Sargent? is that her book oh, is that her name i can't remember i have one of her books but no it's not for me i, I need to watch stephen he does it in such a simple way and so yeah i've invested in the course but that's on the sidelines at the moment because i've got a gazillion other things i'm doing how does the mcal work for you because you have experience of two of them already ah, like is mystery good to you so, um, yeah, two under my belt. And somebody was saying in yesterday, I watched your humans. It was number four. It was series number four. And somebody said exactly the same thing as it, it was for me. And that is, it's pretty easy. Week one, you can get there. By the end of the week, week two, you can get there. By the time you get to week four, there are just hundreds of stitches on your needles. And nice. I think last year I finished... I wasn't that bothered by by week four. I was like, I was done with it. I'd seen loads of spoilers on Instagram. I'd seen everyone else's colours. Um, I knew I was going to finish it. I finished it at Christmas. Um, so I just think it's just fun, but I wasn't going to do it this year. I did the last two years and I did Shawlography and that one. Mm, Slip extravaganza. Um, and this year I was like, no, I'm not going to do it because I... I never wear them. <laughs> I do all this knitting and they sit in a, a plastic box. They're just not really my thing. And I thought, no, I won't do it this year. And then I watched you and Martin and I thought, and I don't know, my fingers just went, do, 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 bought the pattern. But, Yay, I'm doing it. Well, tell um, me, what is it about Martin and I, like our collaboration that excites you? Oh, um, there's always an... A, a, there's always a part there's always like a comradeship between people um over the last few years you watch them on instagram you see their spoilers and eventually you start to see their colors the, the shawls develop um and this year i just watched you guys and thought it was bigger this year it was i could actually really be part of it i could actually be with you and do it with you and I don't know, there's just another element to it this year and i just think it's going to be a lot more fun but I know I'm still gonna, I'll be fine with week one and week two and week three. And I'm, I'm, I won't push myself. I'm, I'm not that mad about finishing on time. I just like participating. Is it called a process knitter when you just like to do it along the journey and then you can give it away to someone at the end? So I just like doing it. I just like the experience, the journey, the movement, the hand, and, and then I'm done with it. Once I've done it, I don't really care for it. So these, that's why I didn't really want to do it this year because all the colours and I'm going to put all that effort in and I don't know. Well, let's talk about colours. You are a yarn dyer. 
I'm a yarn dyer. Is it yes. more difficult for you to pick the colors because you're a yarn dyer? No, I love color. Um, I live and breathe color, so it was, it's never difficult. What was difficult this year is that there were only three colors. I found that quite difficult. Um, so much so that I decided to go, and everybody went that way. I thought, I'm going that way. I'm going to do one color. So, yeah, this year. I'm doing one color. I'm actually I'm really super excited about it. Do you have those, um, those those skeins? Can you show us? Yeah, of course. So I say one color. It's so I thought I really want to wear it this year. Um, and I wear quite a lot of jeans, so I thought I'll do well. I'll go blue. So I'm kind of going to be a, in my head. I've designed it. It's going to be a gradient. So um, we've got. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to start with this variegated blue and although that doesn't look that different it is it's quite dark in places so I'm excited to see there's going to be a lot of variation in the contrast and the mane and then I'm going to end the shawl with the paler blue and again that's gonna the contrast will look great with that and they're my colours it's, it's one colour kind of one colour that's going to be like really interesting to see because it's go you it's going to show the texture more probably because there is less variation in colors and I'm actually like very excited to see your version. Yeah. Oh, well you will. I'll make sure you do. Yeah, but, but um <laughs> but all the all the crazy colors you do, I they kind of somehow disappoint me. It's 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 really a lot of work to find your colors and then you find your five colors or four colors and they start to knit your shawl and I don't know at the end of it you look at it and it's I hear lots of people are really pleased with them they're statement pieces and I suppose I'm not really a statement piece kind of girl I would love to do this shawl and wear it every day and when I've worn that one I mean they're ice cream colors those um all the pastels and it, that was the slip stravaganza yeah yeah um when I've worn it I've worn it with pale blue and people on. I've had people stop me and say, wow, that's incredible. Did you do that? And it, it, if I feel like I'm cheating a bit, it wasn't was very difficult. Even the brilliance <laughs> well, I, think, I think that's the brilliance of Stephen's designs because they look superbly mm. complicated, but they're not necessarily very difficult to knit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe he'll surprise us this year. Maybe he'll be, he'll be very complicated this year. I don't know. Twists and what is it? Twists turns. and turns. I mean, is I there think... some, some technique that scares you? You've done it all, I feel like. No, nothing scares me. Um, I'm not very good at brioche. I was fine with the brioche. I chose the brioche option for this last year's shawl. I was fine with it. A few little mistakes, but like, not bothered. Um, I've started, I downloaded his course. And I've done a couple of the, the first two segments of the course. And the first one was doing brioche in a plain color, breeze, easy. And the second segment was doing brioche in two colors. And I, I, I think I must have undone it about 15 times. I, I can get there and then all of a sudden I go wrong. And, I, and I'm only on the second part of the course, so I need to go right the way through it. But I've got so many other things going on in my life. But um, so no, no, nothing scares me really. Well, do no. you think no, I... West, like do you think his personality or his courses or his designs do you think they changed you as a knitter or influenced you as a knitter? Oh, I've been at it for so many years knitting. Um, he came along, yeah. He's he's an artist and he's warm and friendly and he's in your living room and. Oh gosh, I do aspire to him. He's he's really successful. I mean, nowadays people on the internet, when they make it, they make it big, and he really has done it, and he really does deserve it. He he, he appeals to and watching watching your series of these conversations, he appeals to everybody, absolutely everybody, new knitters, old knitters. He's very special. He's very talented and very special. And I think I get the feeling from him that if I walked into his store, he would be so friendly and so nice. He's he's a real people person. What's the what yeah. does Jesse think about you? Like, I mean, you are you must be the coolest grandma on the planet, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> no, he doesn't think I'm very cool at all. In fact, his school, he came home on Friday and said that um, 
they've done they've been talking about wool all day and at the end of the day um they were allowed to look at a sheep's heart and a sheep's eye that really is what's that one and then he said to me and I said Jesse would you like Nana to phone the school and take my spinning wheel in and can knit five oh, no Nana no Nana don't do that <laughs> He's used to it. He, he's helped me dye wool. Um, I'm hoping to teach him to knit. Cause age seven, it's a little bit young, and he's a boy. But um, I think male knitters are good because knitting is like engineering. It's you're constructing knots. You know, like in the days where perhaps in I come from a seaside town, but the men here and men and they don't really knit, but they make lobster pots. And in order to make a lobster pot, you would need to construct a series of knots and things. Right. Um, and I think men make good, good knitters. They've got a good brain for it. How many mim cows have you done before? So I've never done one. I heard you haven't done one either. I haven't done one either. <laughs> okay, so we're in the same boat. So I have knit some of Stephen West shawls, but I have never participated in an M cow. Same. Now, I'm definitely going to try, but I can't say, so I'm a small business owner. I actually uh, run Wool and Women Fibers and it keeps me so busy that most MCALs, I don't have the time to keep up. So I'll cast on and kind of join in on the fun, but I usually fall behind and that's okay. You know, like I'll just go with it because it's fun, but I usually don't get anything done on time. Well, I mean, what attracts you to Stephen West Designs? Um, for me, I think it's that it's, so I don't want to say it's mindless because you have to really pay attention when there's different sort of like geometric patterns and the shapes he does. But once I learn them, it keeps me really interested and I can sort of remember it. And it's repetitive across those, like those sections of patterns. So for me, it keeps me like super engaged and I'm wanting to get to the next section to like see what's going to happen and I feel like it's it's mindless but at the same time really really interesting so for me I'm not really a knitter that can just knit around and around and stay really engaged in the knit most of the time those end up in my never-ending whip pile but um his keep you really engaged you know your section by section and it, it's almost like a small accomplishment in each section in itself when you finish it so I love that well, the day when the kids came out, all the pictures of the preview of the kids and the day of the kids, did you look at them? What was your impression of the kids? So for me, I mean, I dye yarn. So for me, I find myself not getting to order yarn as much as I'd like because I am I'm buried in it. <laughs> um, but I still love to look. I love to see his color combos because um, he thinks really outside the box. You know, like some things that you would think won't go together actually go together so well and pair so well because of the way he's designing. So like he's going to do the twists and turns. So you got to think of kind of how the two, the main color and the contrasting are going to sort of intertwine, right? right? So maybe two colors you hadn't thought were really going to go together that might not be like my style. I find myself like I can kind of get out of that and think of it like, almost like a painting, like a work of art. So you can kind of get out of that zone and pick something that that you never really have. So when I looked at all the kids, some of them to me were things that I really resonated with. I would I would kind of pick myself, but I like looking at the ones that I was like, hmm, I wouldn't have thought they went together and that they look really great. So, yeah. Did you decide on your? Oh yeah, I have to do one of ours. Actually. <laughs> I wish I could do multiple, but actually I'm between two um, choices right now. Um, so it's fall and I'm normally very kind of bright. So I kind of wanted to go outside of that a little bit and go a little bit more like neutral. So the one that I wanted to go with would have been these two for the uh, main color and the accent color or the main color and the contrasting. Then I wanted to do this as the pop of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe like they're not completely neutrals, but kind of going towards that end. And then the other one was this one where the main and the contrasting are these two kind of in that rose pink and the purple family. And then maybe this pop of a neutral or maybe these two 
with this being the pop of color. So right. I'm kind of torn between the two. I have a, just a few more days to kind of decide, but. Well, what are the chances of October 6th rolling in and you picking up the first clue and going, you know what? I changed my mind completely. I'm going with greens. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it does happen with me. I feel like our business has so many different themes and stuff. So often we'll come out with so many different things and all of a sudden, uh, and we make a lot of custom stuff. Uh, so all of a sudden a color will come out and I'll be like, wow, I need that one. And I'll change my mind. But usually I have a plan and I feel like I need to do that for myself because I don't keep up with MCAL. So I need to have a set ready to go and not change my mind. So these two and getting to these two w were so difficult. <laughs> so I think like I'm going to stick with these two and make myself do it and really, uh, really get it done. At least cast it on on the six, hopefully. <laughs> well, I mean, does the mystery part attracts you or scares you? Mm, I think it never really scares me because I'll try anything once, really. Um, I'm actually a PhD, so... I was into like the science field and I finished my PhD and, and I went to a full-time creative and I feel like it really does the same thing. They resonate a lot with each other. Uh, you're constantly doing something new in, in the lab. And I feel like when I became a full-time creative, it's the same thing. I can do something new all the time. So it doesn't really scare me. Uh, it sort of excites me. I like the idea of something new. And I think his videos that he's going to make, if you get stuck, you know, you can sit and watch it and they're really instructive. And I feel like by the end, you're good to go. Or maybe that's just me. I don't know. But I'm, that's why I'm not afraid. It's right there if I need it. And I'll I'll try anything once. <laughs> well, I mean, are you that easygoing or there is a scientist in you that keeps you on your toes? Yeah, I mean, we always want, I mean, I always would like a roadmap ready to go. And like, I would always like, you know want to know what's coming next but I do like I like the mystery I think I think it's going to be interesting because everything I knit right now I've seen it I know it's coming and I haven't really done that aspect where it's a mystery so I'm kind of looking forward to it maybe afterwards uh, we can revisit that question and then maybe I'll let you know if that changed but I think I'm excited for it when it comes to your dyeing yarn are you more of a scientist or more of an artist hmm um, I think a little more scientist. Uh, I'm really into playing with color. So we mix a lot of custom colors. And I think that's where a lot of the science comes in acid and heat, and making sure you get the right tone. And when you play with heat, you can get things to sort of like stick in place or the for it to pull a little more and move around and get more movement. Um, so I really do think of it that way. But I think when it comes to the themes that because we make these little like themed kits, I think that's more of a creative side where it's more artist than it is science because we're having fun with it, you know, um, but there is a lot of science in it. And I honestly keep my dye studio just like I kept my lab, <laughs> except it's more fun because you get to write custom colors. We come up with like names for them. So my little jars on the shelf are all like cute little names. <laughs> Well, are you uh, capable of like recreating the exact color? Like if I bought something from you today and then I decided yeah. to make a sweater out of it instead of just the two skeins that I bought, like would I be able to match it from your next yeah. batch? Yeah, so we've become really known for that. We're dyed to order, but everything is really written down. I have like three huge binders and that's the whole thing. It's measurement, it's weight. You got to weigh out your dyes and that's a lot like the lab and you got to keep that meticulously written down so that you can recreate it. So that's a lot of the the hard part about dye to order. You got to get it right multiple times all the time. Right. If uh, Stephen West called you one day and said, you know, this year I want you to be responsible for all the kids, how would you approach that? Like, how would you create variety of kids? Uh, um. So I think I'd have to start getting like out of my comfort zone. I would love to talk to him about how he picks his colors out, you know, like do a powwow about that. First of all, I'd have a heart attack that he even called me, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I would love to do like a one-on-one -on -one where I talk to him about how he views color. Cause I think his, his way of viewing color is for a, a project as a whole 
And like I said, the way that the colors are going to play together. So some people, when they pick color, they see just the, the palette and they think that's really pretty. That's wearable. I would love that as like, you know, a sweater or a cowl. But I think like to really do his stuff, you have to see it as the work of art and like the whole that it's going to be because oh, his stuff really is wearable art. So you have to really think of that. That's interesting because when I interviewed Layla from the Urban Pearl, I asked her that and she said that she still doesn't know what the shawl is going to look like. So, she, you know, it's like it has to be the kit, like basically without the, the, it's a mystery to them as well. You know, Yeah, it's hard to pick <laughs> color when you do not know what it's going to look like. So I was thinking because he said you need a cable needle. So we're all talking about cables, right? Um so I was thinking maybe he's having the two colors play together as the main and the the uh, contrasting. So maybe they'll cable together and intertwine, but I'm not really sure. So I was trying to think of it that way, because if you had two that went really well together, the accent would just be off to the side somewhere. Maybe he's got main cables that run those two main colors. And then maybe like a small accent, like a strip of something that maybe is like a shape like he usually does, you know? So I don't know, but it is really hard to pick color when you have no idea what it's going to look like. So, is there yeah. like any technique that intimidates you that you're like, oh, I wish he wouldn't put it in the show? Oh, well, I think I'm with the majority where I'm, I can do brioche, but like not well. If I drop a stitch, I can't fix it. That's my problem is like I can perform the brioche, but if anything goes wrong, I have to tear the whole thing back. Sometimes I can manage to fix it. And other times I think I'm missing a yarn over in there somewhere. But there aren't a whole lot of videos on how to fix brioche in depth. Like there are some that tell you a little bit about it. But when you really drop one and it falls a couple stitches down, it's like devastating. <laughs> I can't think. I don't know why, but I haven't done very much of it. So I feel like if I if he had a video, I might be able to get through it. But um. But yeah, I think brioche would have to be my number one arch nemesis. I've only ever done a little bit of it. Do you think it's going to be difficult for you to balance it with the business? Oh, yeah, it's going to be rough. I will be very surprised if I stay on track. But I try not to beat myself up about it. I try to just say, you know, I do what I can and and I'll eventually get there because um, we're, we're full time doing this and it. It can be rough at times to find a spare moment, even just to knit for myself. And you would think surrounded by yarn, that's probably not what happens, but it's exactly what happens. <laughs> Tell me your last year's experience with the Mr. Nitalong. So it was my first one last year, shellography. Um, and I had started sort of really knitting and paying attention to the knitting world the year before. So I saw everybody doing slip extravaganza. And every time I saw a picture, my jaw would drop. I was like, <laughs> I'll never be able to do that. Um, but it looked like a lot of fun. And the interaction between people who, was, who were doing it was just inspiring. Okay. So the next year I thought, all right, I, I need to give this a try. I'll give up halfway through it, but at least I'll have given it a try. I couldn't put it down. And it was just, it was so much fun. I loved my colors. Um, by the time I realized that Stephen had kits, they were all sold out. Right. So I'm looking at his website, trying to figure out what do I do? And then I, I come across this link in his on his website that said, you can sign up for a 15 minute shopping spree with Stephen. Oh, that's via so cool. Zoom. I didn't even know that that exists. <laughs> and if you, and which is great, and he'll talk to you about any Stephen West pattern. And so I thought, all right, well, I'll give that a try. So I fill out the form and send it in and I get an appointment. Um, and it was the best experience because he, well, first of all, he's absolutely charming and engaging and just, just a, genuine person. I mean, I was, I felt so comfortable talking to him. Right. And, and he said, I said, you know, here's what I like. He had asked what colors I like. And I had mentioned a couple of the kits that I saw that I liked. And from then he just, when we started, he had three or four examples already laid out just on the form. And I love them all, but I thought, well, 
well, I couldn't just say yes to one and that'd be done, right? So <laughs> we talked about it and he just he just kept playing with ideas and pulling pulling yarn and putting them together and saying, what about this? And I would say, well, how about the, that color from the previous set you showed me with what you've, and we ended up with a kit that just was, it just screams me. And, and it was just, it was wonderful. Can, can, do you have your shawl next to you somewhere? Yeah, it's right here. So. I love that. And it's just, it's, it's very subtle. It's nothing really flashy, but it's me. It's be it's beautiful. Okay, I love so it. Like, is it. Does that make more difficult to pick colors this time? Or like, are you still being you? Or are you going wild Stephen kind of way now? So um, you are, on the other interviews, you asked the question, are you team kit or team <laughs> stash? I am without question team kit. And I had, before the kits went live, I had probably chosen, written down about six or eight Amazing. from the wildest neon to the kit that I picked because the kit that I picked is the furthest from a wild neon. Um, I love it. I kind of wish I had been a little bit more adventuresome. Well, you know, it's not too late. I know. And I've seen, uh, you know, other dyers, you know, have put together their own kits and I see them and I think, you know what? I've made my decision. I'm going to stick with it because I love what I chose. It's just not wild and crazy and vibrant like so many kids. You want to see? Have that kit? Oh, absolutely. Yep. Um, it's the mom one of the Momonoki kits. So these are the. This is the main color, the contrasting color, and then this is the accent color. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. So it's going to be very, very autumnal. Um, and very, um, I think, subtle, um, which is fine. And I'll, I'm sure I will love it. But when there was one interview you did where sh she was using that really brilliant purple La Bien Ami with a, a more pastel -y and then a bright pink, that just, my jaw dropped when I saw that combination. I was like, wow. Well, that's my problem because like I keep seeing all these beautiful combinations and I'm like, okay, am I sticking with what I picked? Am I choosing, changing my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Tell me like a little bit before the life before Stephen, right? Mm -hmm. What did you learn how to knit? How long have you been knitting? So my mother had tried to teach me how to knit when I was a kid and she, she threw the yarn. I can't remember if that's continental or uh, English. English. Okay. So she threw, um, and I knew how to do it, but I just, uh, boys didn't knit. Right. So I, it, I didn't take to it. Um, and then years, like probably five years ago, six years ago, um, while I was still work before I retired, I needed a change of craft. I wanted something different. I'd been doing needlepoint. I'd been quilting as, as therapy from, from the stress of work. Um, and I thought, well, I should learn how to knit. So I took a basic knitting class from the local yarn store in Chicago and I learned Continental and I, never, I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It took me another couple of years to really get started, but probably for the last two or three years now, I've been knitting pretty regularly. And do you do you think like, because you're a crafter, right? You've done other things. Do you think because you haven't knitted for that long, you are more adventurous knitter than you would have been if you knitted from the childhood? No question. No question. Because in my other crafts, I don't, I don't like easy. I don't like simple. I like, I like a challenge. Um, and I find knitting to be a wonderfully relaxing challenge. And so I didn't, I wasn't afraid to to knit a sweater is my second project, you know? Um, and, and it's just only continued from there, which, which made, you know, the shawlography last year a little bit easier, right. um, but, but still intimidating, but it was, it was fun. And. Well, you mentioned to me that your mom is your biggest cheerleader when it comes to knitting. What yeah. did you think about shawlography? Like when she saw that? She, she loved, she said, Oh, I could never do that. And I said, mom, of course you could do that. She said, well, not now. Well, I said, well, maybe not now. 
but you know, she's 92. Um, but she's, she still crochets and she, um, she just loves handwork always has. Um, I mean, I had sweaters from her as a child and hats and mittens. Um, and, um, but she's just, she is blown away. I'll, I've got, she's got, um, the corrugation shawl by Stephen that I knit for her uh, over the summer. So she'd have it this winter and she's got it on the back of her chair. And when it's cold, she'll just wrap it around herself. And she just, but again, it's something she would never have, you know, tried to do for herself. I find that so, so hearing that like you, you know, were hesitant as a child to knit, but now you like knitting things that she can't imagine knitting. <laughs> Uh, and it's it's just great fun. It's great fun. It's it's interesting how we grow up about things like that. Right. What do you expect from my collaboration with Martin? So, I expect this. You know, um, it, it, last year was was great fun. I had talked to a really good friend of mine in Canada about doing it together. So she and I did it and we shared stories and swapped pictures and we, we met on Zoom every now and then um, to play cribbage, but to also talk knitting. Um, yeah, Zoom cribbage is interesting, but anyway. Um, and that was, that was a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed having somebody to knit it with. Um, and then when I saw what you and Martin are doing, I thought, I can have that on steroids, you know, it's that kind of um, it, it, camaraderie and interaction and support and encouragement that makes, you know, this a lot of fun. Right.